Situational judgment, the final section of the UCAT. You are almost at the end of the exam and you've just got this final section to do before you are free from the UCAT. But don't relax just yet because scoring high in this section is essential because this is probably the most clinically relevant section. So make sure you stay tuned for this video to find out exactly how to score band one in situational judgment. Also a big thank you to Medicut for sponsoring this video and make sure you stay tuned all the way to the end to hear about an exciting giveaway I'm doing with them. So how does this section work? The situational judgment section is designed to test your professional judgment in clinical and non-clinical settings. You're given 69 questions to do in 26 minutes and this section is unique in the fact that there is not much time pressure for it. This isn't scored like the other sections, instead you're given a score from band 1 to band 4, band 1 being the best and band 4 being the worst. And unlike some of the other questions, here you can actually score partial marks due to some of the questions having an element of subjectivity. My first tip for this section is practice by doing practice questions. I remember when I started off, I got a lot of practice questions I was doing wrong just because I didn't really know what the expectations of doctors and different people in medical settings were. I didn't really know the official rules that they were meant to follow and I just kind of used my own judgment. But by doing practice questions, you quickly pick up the professional requirements for different doctors and different people in the scenarios. The thing I would say is if you're doing practice questions and you get some wrong, don't just skip over the ones you get wrong. Make sure you go and read the explanations for why they're wrong and that way you can get the understanding so that you don't make the same mistake twice and I think I think with this section as well you kind of pick it up quite quickly because a lot of the time similar scenarios always come up and you have to apply the same like logical principles to them and so by doing practice questions you prepare yourself in the best way for the actual exam but to be honest when I was preparing for this section most of my revision just did consist of practice questions rather than like reading whole documents and stuff and making notes and complicating it I just stuck with practice questions and that served me quite well but obviously people learn differently and that brings me on to tip number Number two, which is if you are the type of person who likes to make notes or likes to have official rules to follow, I would highly recommend checking out the documents Good Medical Practice and Outcomes for Graduates by the GMC. I'll leave the link in the description, but they are essentially the rules that all doctors and clinicians have to follow and it's pretty much what situational judgment is testing you on. I didn't really focus my revision around these, but I did look at these once or twice before the exam just to have like a read through and see if I was missing anything. But I know some people like to make flashcards on them and make notes because we all have different learning styles. So if that is something you're interested in, I would refer to those documents as your like official guide for things that you need to be looking at. Tip number three is take your time. Unlike the other sections of the UGAT where you're constantly in a rush, it is not the case for this section. And that is a good thing. Instead of verbal reasoning where we would scan quickly the passage, what we can do here is take our time and I would personally recommend reading the scenario twice just to make sure that you fully understand it and don't miss anything and you do have a lot of time for these questions and also make sure you read the answer options very carefully because if you misread it and select the wrong one that's one mark you're just losing for no reason and just perhaps by reading it twice if you want to you're just double checking that you are clicking the right one. It is likely at the end of the section that you will have some time spare rather than just sit there or ending your test early I would personally recommend going through the whole section again because you you can never be too cautious with it. Um, even if you pick up one extra mark by doing that, it might be the difference between scoring band two and band three. And so I would just recommend being cautious and double checking your answers rather than ending your test early. Tip number four is an essential one. Make sure you know the roles of the different people in the scenarios. These scenarios often focus around people like medical students, junior doctors, consultants, and it's absolutely essential that you know what the roles of each of these people are and what their expectations are so that you can give an appropriate answer. I'll quickly run through these now, but I also recommend doing further research yourself just to make sure that you are fully aware of it. Medical students have a mainly observational role. They do not necessarily need to be supervised when doing examinations, history taking and clinical skills, but they do need the approval of a supervisor to do so. And they are allowed to view patient records. Junior doctors can prescribe, perform clinical skills, make decisions about patients, request investigations and propose treatment plans. Consultants have the responsibility to make overall decisions for the patient's care and can also make specialist decisions as well. They have the highest level of responsibility for the patient. This is just a brief summary and I would recommend looking into this area a bit more yourself just to make it absolutely clear that you know what different people are allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do. I think this table on screen summarises all of that pretty well so have a look at this if you need to.
And just by having that awareness, it really helps answering the questions because I didn't really look into this until about a week before my exam. And then when I did, I did see that I found it a lot easier to answer questions because when you know exactly what their role and expectation is, it makes it easier to assess whether their actions are appropriate or inappropriate. And now before I get on to tip number five, I'd like to quickly tell you about today's sponsor, Medicut. Medicut have an amazing online masterclass for the UCAT with nine hours of professional teaching jam-packed all into just one day. You go through in detail key strategies and techniques to score highly for every single section, as well as looking at practice questions and mini mocks. You are taught by professional UCAT tutors who know exactly what you need to be doing in order to score very highly in the UCAT. The course also includes an ebook copy of the Master the UCAT book, which is worth $14.99, that contains those of key advice and strategies and is written by people who have scored in the top 1% in the UCAT. The overall cost for this online UCAT masterclass course by Medica is £99, but by using code SHAN10 at checkout, you will save 10%. So instead of £99, it will cost you £89.10, saving you almost £10. I personally would say this is definitely a worthwhile investment if you want to just maximise your chance of scoring high in the UCAT and getting into your dream university. The link for the online masterclass will be in the video description and remember to use code SHAN10 at checkout and get yourself that 10% off. Medica also offer one-to-one -one UCAT tutoring as well as BMAT and interview preparation masterclasses which may be of interest to you further down the line in your medical application process. Thank you so much to Medica for sponsoring the video and now on to tip number five. Tip number five is know exactly what the answer boxes mean. It can be a bit ambiguous between about things like the difference between very important and just important so make sure you know the exact differences between them. If we look at the importance questions, very important means that this action is absolutely vital in order to resolve the main problem in the scenario. Important means that taking this action can help solve the main problem, but by not taking this action, you will not hinder the main problem being solved. Minor important means that this action does not cause any effect to the main problem, but at the same time, by taking this action, you're not being gonna, you're not gonna be causing any harm. So essentially, it's not doing any good, but it's not doing any harm. And not important means that by doing this, it would be considered damaging and have a negative effect on the scenario. So hopefully that like clarifies a bit of those answers and that will help you pick the correct answer for the scenario. Tip number six is remember that each question is independent of the previous questions. That means there is no correlation between the answers. For example, you might feel like a lot of the questions you're answering as very important. That is perfectly okay. It could well possibly be that a lot of the questions that have the answer very important. Don't think that because I've put a lot of the same answers now, I need to pick something else. Always remember that there's no correlation between them and just pick whatever you think is correct and that'll probably help you score the highest. And tip number seven, the final tip is think professionally. These questions are not designed to test what you would do, but what you should do. Realistically, some of the things are not things you would do in real life. For example, I think there was a scenario where it's apparently very bad if you lend one of your friends lecture notes, but in reality, people just do that anyway because we are human and that is just the natural and kind thing to do. Don't think, what, should, what would I do in this situation? Think, what should I do in this situation? And that should help you come to the right answer. So hopefully that helps you a bit with your situational judgment. Best of luck with your UCAT preparation. And now stay tuned to hear about a giveaway I'm doing with Medicut that will hopefully help you along with your UCAT preparation. I am so excited to announce that I will be giving away this Master of the UCAT book kindly sent to me by Medicut. This book is an Amazon bestseller and is made by people who have scored in the top 1% in the UCAT. It contains all the key strategies you need to be able to score highly in every single section of the UCAT. All you have to do to win this book is subscribe to my channel, leave a comment down below, and you are automatically entered into this giveaway. There is no limit on the number of comments you can leave and the winner will be randomly selected on July the 1st, 2021. This is a UK only giveaway, so give it your best shot if you're from the UK and hopefully one of you will be winning this Master the UCAT book so that you can score very high in the UCAT as well. Thank you so much for getting to this point in the video. I hope you're able to learn something new that will hopefully help you push your scores even higher in the UCAT and best of luck. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel because throughout June I will be posting more UCAT videos going through every single section to hopefully help you guys at home score as well as you can in the UCAT. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!